The Incapate Club podcast is intended for mature audiences. I know we're usually talking about kids' cartoons and stuff, but there's going to be naughty language. Uh, anyway, uh, listener discretion is advised. All right, let's, well, let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's let's just get sad. Let's just get real depressed around here. Yeah. More so than usual. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Ink and Paint Club Podcast, your weekly home for animation reviews and discussions. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Ink and Paint Club Podcast. My name is JD, and with me are my two good chums, Mr. Kyle. Yes, you, Kyle. It's always you. Forever and always, you're stuck with me. Until death takes one of us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt is also here. Him. Yeah. Matt, I haven't known you long enough to, to form a, a, a death bond with you yet. <laughs> well, Perhaps one day. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll get there one day. <laughs> um... So, um, BoJack Horseman wrapped up, uh, last week, I think, uh, very recently. And, uh, we haven't talked about BoJack in a hot minute, so, uh, we're kind of here to talk about, you know, how it wrapped up, um, uh, you know, how our feelings and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, honestly, guys, I thought it was kind of a, it was a good ending, but also kind of a weird ending, if that makes any sense. Um, this seems to be the consensus I've seen. Yeah. Um, what What was your guys' uh, take on this, like, kind of um, final season here? You first. <laughs> <laughs> well, JD, oh. uh, JD, oh. you're the only <laughs> one that's actually um, you're the one that's actually talked about BoJack uh, of us on this show. Oh, uh, was Kyle? Kyle, were you not on the the other BoJack episode? No, oh, you you weren't. Um, you had another Matt on your episode about BoJack. Actually, oh, so now we had Taco Bus Matt. Yeah, and oh, that was that was episode okay. just before I made my uh, first appearance. Actually, that was I was oh. gonna be on that episode, but um, I was at work, and so we replaced you with a different Matt. Yeah, uh, until you know, <laughs> temporarily until the uh, <laughs> yeah crox- the crossover Nexus episode. So yeah. Uh, yeah, no, me and Kyle haven't actually talked about BoJack on this show yet. Yeah, so please tell tell me your feelings on BoJack. I I love this show. I, I thought it was very great. It was the whole reason why I ever uh, got Netflix in the first place. Actually, I um I had a friend that uh, when he used to live in town uh, some years ago. Oh, well, I guess it would have been BoJack premiered in 2014. So yeah, in 2014. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would always like go and hang out over in his garage and just like you know play uh, emulated NES games on his Wii or you know watch Netflix or you know Futurama or something. Uh, and then BoJack premiered and we're like, hey, you know, let's you know let's uh, check this out, see what it's all about. And uh, we, I think we almost got through like the whole season because we we just enjoyed it that much. We we're just like laughing our ass off at just <laughs> like you know all the different like the wordplay and the jokes and like the visual gags and um, you know all that. And um, yeah, so it finally kind of just pushed me over the edge. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I guess I'll finally, uh, you know, uh, give Netflix a try. Just to, if anything else, just to, you know, actually, you know, rewatch the season, you know, finish it up on my uh, own time. And then, uh, yeah, basically, so every uh, time that they put out a new season since then, with the exception of this last season, uh, for seasons two through uh, five, basically, you know, I, I'm really hard about like starting new shows and stuff. Ever since I've joined, you know, doing the podcast and stuff, I've gotten a bit better about it just because it helps to have like a, you know, deadlines and stuff. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, um, but Bojack was one of those exceptions where it was like, you know, oh, season two just came out. Like, well, I'm going to drop everything I'm doing and, you know, watch through all that and then probably rewatch season <laughs> one. Um, like when season three came out, I was like, I'm going to rewatch the first two seasons and then watch season three. Uh, once like four and five came out, I, didn't you know rewatch the other seasons i luckily they had like the recaps and stuff but uh um, right yeah so you know i i like the show that much that I was willing to just sort of like uh, drop everything and like when they drop you know a new season and watch it um 
except for this last season because you know they split it up and uh, they put out the first eight and I think it was October or uh, uh, yeah, it sounds about right. Later, later half of, the, of last year, um, and I, as much as I really wanted to watch it, I also really just wanted to be able to watch the whole season at once, which is kind of like mm-hmm. you know when you get used to like streaming media now and how. You know, everything just gets dropped at once. You're, you you want to be able to just like have the have the ability or the opportunity to binge it, even if you don't actually do it. Right. But, I mean, I, I did end up doing that though. I um, once the new season came out, I spent all of last um, well, not all, but uh, I spent last Friday watching all that the first eight episodes, and then like the next day, the Saturday, I watched you know the last eight, and um, yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm a very big fan of BoJack, and um. I'm disappointed to see that you know that it's ended, but I was actually very satisfied with how it wrapped up. Um, I was actually just talking to Kyle about this uh, before we, you know, re- you showed up when we started recording. But uh, a lot of people are also, you know, similarly disappointed with the show ending. But it's one of those things where, you know, you want to be able to enjoy the show like after the fact as well like you don't want to run into a situation like with the simpsons where you go on for so long that your ratio of you know good to bad episodes favors like the bad episodes i would say that basically through the lifespan of bojack horseman you know through you know seasons one through six like it's pretty much been like top quality television throughout like there's very yeah for sure like like i wouldn't say that there's been like you know dud episode at all like i would have to go back and watch some of the you know older seasons and stuff but i i don't recall ever disliking an episode of bojack like you know i i, I liked them all yeah for sure yeah uh kyle what do, what have you been thoughts on uh bojack i guess as a whole as a whole uh think it's fine i just like matt i don't really see it kind of lasting as far as uh many people had wanted it to last um i know there was the whole thing about the strike or whatever that caused it to end but honestly i don't see how many rock bottoms the guy can hit and keep it entertaining so Mm -hmm. i think it probably ended at a at a good point but um it's one of those strange things where I don't find it very relatable since everything's very Hollywood and um, show business, all the stuff. And then don't really have depression. So it's not really relatable to me. Never Hmm. been addicted to anything, but uh, I do enjoy the humor in it and the wordplay. And I don't know. It's one of the shows where I like the side characters more than the main character. Okay. Yeah, this show is filled with like a lot of great side characters. Uh, mm-hmm. That was what. That's okay. That might be my only complaint about uh, this last season is we never got any follow up on uh, Vincent Adult Man. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have liked. I would have liked to see him at least like one more time, but unfortunately, we didn't. Yeah, and then, he's just uh, a very awkwardly shaped human. <laughs> yeah. I know, what was it, a lot of people were complaining that they never saw what uh, what the letter said and all that kind of stuff, and that's another thing where it's like it doesn't need to be shown. It shows that she uh, changed her phone number, so that should be obvious already. Mm-hmm. Oh, obviously, uh, this, sorry, obviously there's spoilers, so if you're listening this far into it, that's, and you haven't watched season six, go do that first. If you're a long-time listener of this show, you should just assume spoilers are implied. <laughs> we probably should not, put a warning. We I'm probably sorry. should put a warning at the beginning, though. I should just put that on, in the introduction where it says going to be naughty language. You just add a, a, a little asterisk that also spoilers. Just a big alarm. No matter what it is, just no matter yeah. how old it is. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I had um. I had similar thoughts about that letter too. There, I know that there's lots of people saying like, "Oh, we should have been able to uh, at least like peek a little bit at what the letter was about." Like, even if they weren't going to hear the whole thing, but it's like it, not completely necessary. Like, you you understand like from how from Bojack's reaction to it and like what happened afterwards. Like, you you know what the content of the letter was it's, about. It's obvious from the way she was acting towards him. Yeah. When he was 
teaching and all this stuff. It's very obvious. I don't see... It's one of those things where it's uh, the opposite of show, don't tell. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, totally. That's how I felt, at least. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I've... I've I've kind of forgotten like what kind of happens between you know season to season of this show. Um, like I know I remember bits and parts whether or not they're like in the right order. I'm remembering, um, but you know when they bring something up in the show, it kind of breaks sparks me back, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I kind of remember this a little bit. Um, but I do kind of like I, I I'm kind of liking that this show. Um, ended when it did kind of i assume had the ending that it kind of wanted to have um because i i'm kind of with you kyle in the sense that um um i i just can't i was kind of getting to the point where it's like how many times can bojack fall down and get back up and have this have a revelation and something and still be entertaining um i did like how in this last season that a lot of his mistakes from uh, the past were really starting to come back to bite him in the ass for real. Um, And, you know, obviously he gets sent to jail over it for a hot second. And, uh, you know, you kind of get to see the consequences of those actions. Um, But you do actually get to see him try to better himself, kind of find like um, a better place in the world for himself. Um, But, you know, uh, you got to, pay for your fuck ups somehow um yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that that's and that's one of those things where yeah like you guys said you know they can only show him you know fucking up and you know recovering so many times before it, it i mean yeah the show is sad but like you know before he just gets like very very sad to just see him constantly like fucking up like you know in this last season it was nice to finally see him retain some uh or regain some sense of um you know normalcy um mm-hmm. even though That's... things were constantly like you know shifting around him as regards to like his relationship to people and like with the industry and stuff right and that, that's the thing too is that he didn't even go to jail over what he had done in the past it was for breaking and entering into a house right so it wasn't even really comeuppance towards that. Yeah. So yeah, he never actually faced like comeuppance for you know a lot of like the sort of, like the the worst the worst shit that he did. And honestly, I mean, you know, that's a, a lot of the content in this show is you know very, I would say, very accurately reflects like the the whole attitude in Hollywood towards this sort of stuff. I mean, like you know, you can only imagine like the types of things that you know, your favorite celebrities have, you know, gotten up to that, you know, obviously, you know, we wouldn't know about or anything like we only hear about the stuff that, you know, the paparazzi and like, you know, journalists and, you know, kind of, you know, turn the rock over on or, you know, you know, find out about, um, you know, obviously not this, you know, not to say that's, it's, you know, it's our business or anything about, you know, that, but still it's just, you know, I, this, that's one thing that I really enjoyed about this show is just like how, um, how it wasn't afraid to sort of tackle these um these issues like uh the the whole episode in season in in this last season where they're um they're uh they're doing the interview uh with bojack about the the last days of sarah lynn and stuff and Mm -hmm. how uh how they were trying to like you know oh the the ratings were so good on this we should you know do a follow-up episode and then they're like oh well you know maybe maybe you shouldn't have done that like yeah, you totally nailed him on that shit just because you wanted some good ratings, like, uh, right? And then yeah, it's like, you know, because like you kind of look at that, and then you look at like, um, I think it was uh, Gail King that did like the interviews with like R. Kelly and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. obviously not like the same exact same you know content or anything, but still like the the the, the same sort of like attitude in regards to that, right? Um, and you know, and that's and that's just that, like you know, throughout like the rest of the show they've uh done very good about um sort of bringing like different issues to the forefront there was the um uh oh no even in this uh th- even in this season there was a bit where uh 
uh, Diane and her uh, and her boyfriend Guy were like trying to uh, uh, discover like if uh, what was it, what was it called like white the uh, white whale uh, publishing or something. But like, oh you know, yeah, it's basically they're trying to take down Amazon or some other big conglomerate. Yeah, and they're like, he was like, you know, dividing them over. He's like, oh yeah, no, I I killed them like <laughs> because they just passed this bill in the Senate that lets billionaires kill people like. <laughs> like obviously, obviously, very much like you know, poking fun at like just how terrible our fucking government can be, but uh, yeah, you know, just enough like you know, parody and satire there to you know at least you know not make it like you know too depressing and how real it can all be. Mm-hmm. Still very sad, but you know, like you know, you yeah. can just giggle at it. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, so, uh, kind of going back to something you mentioned earlier is that. Um, this show has never been a stranger of like shying away from, um, you know, deeper subject matter and kind of like um, topics of like um, addiction and mental health and just general life stress. Um, I I I think like one of my favorite episodes from uh, not I guess not just this last batch of episodes, but maybe like this last season. Um, is I really enjoyed the episode with um, Diane trying to write her her novel, and it basically uh, when it switches animation styles to like these scribbles because she can't um, just kind of like coherently piece together her life story um, in an interesting way, and you see her trying to uh, reorder it or reword it and stuff, and it's like as someone who has tried on multiple occasions to put a coherent story together, I it, it kind of hit a little too hard to home right um in that whole in the whole section but i also liked how it kind of worked um through that whole process and like kind of gave it a, a, a an interesting uh visual to represent it um and i i kind of liked how like she set out to make this like novel about like uh like how she's had all this trauma in her her life and um you know how it's affected her and like she like works through it that maybe that's not the most interesting story she has in her and it starts ends up writing a uh a young adult novel instead <laughs> um and it becomes infinitely more um you know accessible for for readers and um and i i guess that is kind of um you know the thing about being creative is like sometimes the the thing you 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 think you're really passionate about um, isn't necessarily the thing that it, like, you're probably meant to be working on. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I just like enjoyed um, the whole process of that episode. I thought it was really well done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was another thing I meant to bring up was like, typically like there's at least one episode in every season of Bojack that's uh, done in a very peculiar way. Like uh, in season five, there's the whole episode that was just like one big uh, monologue uh, from Bojack at his uh, mom's funeral. Oh, he does the eulogy. Yeah, no, the, the eulogy. eulogy yeah. Um, yeah. Or like, uh, I think it was in season one where they had like, you know, the drug trip episode or in season, um, I think four, the one that completely took place underwater that was like mostly uh, no dialogue. Right. Um, like, yeah, where he's a horse child. His head. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like this season, there was like, at least like the three that I can think of, like off the top of my head, there was that one with Diane. There was the one with the uh, princess Carolyn with the uh, untitled princess Carolyn project, the baby <laughs> where like, it kept on showing like all the different, like, uh, like it was showing all the, um, different positions of her, like in that scene of like her interacting with people, but just like completely fills the screen with like versions of her, like just completely. Cause you know, it's like very reflective of who princess Carolyn as a person is like, you know, she keeps busy. She's constantly like, you know, trying to keep her connections up with everyone and stuff. And mm-hmm. um, so that was very cool. And then uh, like the second to last episode, the one with like uh, Bojack as he's like dying in the pool where like he's um, with, all these people that have had this uh, significant impact on his life, like sort of, you know, describing like, you know, what their life meant and like, uh, uh, to, you know, like people into each other and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's, and that's one of the other aspects about Bojack that I've just always very much enjoyed as opposed to, um, or in comparison to other, um, adult animated series is that they weren't, uh, 
they weren't afraid to get like really weird with like not just the actual uh, animation in the show but just like um the yeah the, the content matter of it, or uh, the co- the content matter of it as well uh because right. i mean any of those experimental episodes are like you know they're they're not like any of the other ones that they did like throughout this the show they're all like still very unique to each other mm-hmm. um yeah so i i kind of like conflicted on how i feel about the final episode or not the final episode the the episode where uh bojack's basically in his purgatory um having the dinner with all of the dead people who have impacted his life um i'm still not sure whether or not i wanted the show to end after that episode and it goes on for like another episode or two um after that episode um because i i didn't want him to like straight up die like i didn't want the the show to like just be like oh he dies um but i did like just the he's talking to like his old producer uh, friend, he's talking to his mom and his dad, who is secretariat for some reason. <laughs> um, his brother um, that I don't know has ever really been brought up before or at least shown. Which one? Uh, Cracker Jack? Uh, his, his brother that was in the army. That was uh, Beatrice's brother. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I, yeah, sorry, it's his uncle. Sorry, I thought it was his brother yeah, yeah. for some reason. Um. Uh, and the the black guy who hung himself, I don't even remember. Yeah, he I was on the Secretariat movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was trying like to remember said, that I while had, I was watching it too. Yeah, like I like I said, I there's so there's there was such long stretches of time between seasons, um, and I never really had the time to go back and like rewatch seasons before yeah. the new one came out. So like. like Basically, at the mercy of the uh, like the recaps that uh, Netflix does uh, right before you start I mean, the new I, season, right? Um, I I mean I like that he was having these conversations about like you know they were they're they're basically playing best moment worst moment of their life, um, and um, just having conversations with those people and then like just watching them one by one. Uh, go into the void and like you know be dead forever. Um, I thought that was kind of a, a an interesting you know send off for the for the for these specific characters because um, a lot of them are like you know big uh, big characters that um, you know have died throughout the show uh, to bring them back like one last time and kind of give them a good send off. Um, but also kind of like show Bojack his mortality and you know don't know whether or not he's going to die. Obviously he's, you know, revived at the end of the episode. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if, uh, do you like actually, uh, watch through the credits or do you let it like skip to the next episode? Um, I, I mean, I just let it, I just let it run. Cause, uh, uh like that specific episode, like I, I typically, when I'm watching something on Netflix or specifically BoJack, if it um, if the episode ends with like the, you know, the way back in the '90s, like you know, uh-huh. the, the actual end theme, like I'll, I'll tend to skip it. But uh, if it's ending on anything else, I'll watch through the credits, like just to hear whatever song they're ending with or whatever. So mm-hmm. in that episode, they end it like you know with that flat line. But uh, if you watch through the credits, like near the end of it, like it, the heartbeat kicks back up again. Right. So yeah, and I'm not sure if. Uh, you know, if there's people out there that might have caught that because you know they are at the whims of a Netflix's like sort of auto. Um, yeah, it's auto yeah. place thing. Yeah, but um, uh, I, th- I thought that was a really cool touch on that uh, specific uh, uh, end credits the sequence. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so like I said, I, I'm not sure if I would have wanted the show to end there rather than where it does. Because um, on the one hand, I do think it it's kind of a poignant end for him. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of, uh, you know, like Todd, Diane, Princess Carolyn are not in that episode at all. Mr. Peanut Butter. Uh, or Mr. Peanut Butter. Yeah. Like none of the other major characters are, are in that episode. So it would have been kind of weird to end it there with, uh, none of them to kind of get a, you know, well, uh, no, Diane, Diane's up. technically in there, like near the end, but 
Yeah, because it's know, not like Diane. It's like his mental. No, yeah, it's, because... yeah. Um, but I mean, the the actual final episode, I I I guess is fine. Um, because you know you see Bojack going to jail for a little bit, but uh, you know he's allowed to come out to go to Princess Carolyn's wet wedding, which. I'm fine that she got married. I just don't know how I feel about like, oh, uh, she's marrying this assist- the the Diedrich Bader assistant guy. <laughs> I'm I'm just, glad I'm glad Princess Carolyn finally ended up with somebody good. I, I went through the whole show just like sort of lamenting the fact that she always ended up with people that were not right for her because I think Princess right. Carolyn might be my favorite character on the show. Yeah, I I did like that uh, when she and Bojack are dancing at the way, and they kind of like a joke about how uh, it's like, "What you thought I was gonna run off with you?" Yeah, <laughs> it's like, no, that'd be like the worst kind of way to end this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of a you do kind of let get opportunities where uh, Bojack gets to talk with all the major characters, kind of have like one nice poignant conversation with them to kind of wrap things up um and then you know it ends with uh him and diane kind of hashing it out on the roof um as the show ends basically (laughs) um what how how did you guys feel about like how like the actual final episode kyle it was just fine (laughs) (laughs) i don't have strong feelings towards it or against it I have no strong feelings either way. <laughs> Do you feel like maybe it would have been better if they had ended on the episode just before that? Where he dies? Yeah. Like, do you think it would have been like a, a more, I don't know. Cause I always had this feeling like, I think maybe like once I started getting into the second season where I was thinking like, yeah, by the end of this show, like, I think the show might end up with like Bojack just like just straight up dying. In fact, when I saw that episode where like, you know, he was dead at the end. He flatlined. Um, I, but I knew that there was still one episode left until like, I heard that heartbeat kick up in the end credits. I kind of was thinking like, Oh, this whole last episode still left. It's going to be people reacting to his death. Um, like it's going to be his funeral. <laughs> yeah. Or just like, you know, the, the news breaks out like across Hollywood and like people are just, it's just going to be, you know, all of his um, you know, close Matt, friends. Matt, reacting. It's Hollywood now. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> they, they thought that that is was... the dumbest joke, and that like the the, the whole like Hollywood Hollywood thing is I, I feels like the dumbest but most brilliant joke in this entire show. Yeah, the fact that they, they do it in the, like the first episode or something, and it's just a running joke for the entire show. Well, actually, because you have to pay a giant fucking fee to use the Hollywood sign in there, so it's kind of a joke on that. Oh, is it really? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I did not know that. I was um, just before re- recording, I just read, uh, I was reading a, a, a list of influences that uh, uh, Ralph Bob Wax, uh, Waxberg had for the show. And um, mm-hmm. w- one of the ones that he specifically listed uh, in relation to this gag was uh, he listed the tick. Um, there's an episode okay. <laughs> There's an episode where a chairface Chippendale is going to go to uh, uh, carve his name out in the moon but he just gets uh, the the c and the h in and so like for the rest of the show anytime there's a nighttime scene you see like the c and an h in the moon no it's uh it's cha c-h-a oh is it okay yeah he stops him, he stops him in time but he still carved his part of his name into the moon right right but <laughs> apparently that was the direct influence for the hollywood uh gag for bojack that's I thought that funny. Was pretty funny. <laughs> But um, but yeah, so yeah, I always had this idea that Bojack was going to die, and that was how the series was going to end. Uh, but after seeing like how they sort of approached it and stuff, like I am glad that we still had that last episode to follow up that uh, episode of him interacting with all the yeah. you know people that had died. Um, just because you know the the whole the whole nature of the show is Bojack falling in his face and getting back up again. Um, and in this last season, we came the closest to him being, um, you know, going to rehab and trying to, you know, actually, you know, be a good person and stuff. And so even with all this uh, stuff from his past, um, you know, coming back to bite him in the ass, like it would have been it would have it would have been 
dissatisfying to end on that note for him to have died uh, as a result of uh, all this. But it, again, it would have fit the it, it would have fit the show. I feel like right. it, it would have fit within like the sort of the 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 way that the show approaches this sort of stuff. Um, in the same in the same way that you know we never see uh, Holly Hawk's letter to Bojack, but like we know, like we know what it says without having to have read it. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So I yeah, like I feel like if he died, it would have been a major cop out, easiest route yeah. they could have taken. Yeah, totally. So I'm I'm glad that they had the follow up there just to sort of you know remind people that you know r- rehab is not a you know, a one way street. It's not like, you know, you go to rehab and then like everything was fine afterwards. Nothing from your past is going to come, you know, attack you about it over again. Your relationship with, pe- with people that you burn bridges over with this sort of thing, uh, you know, they're going to be all repaired and everything's going to be fine. Like, uh, you know, by the end of the, the very last episode, you know, you get the idea that, you know, Diane and uh, Bojack are not going to basically you know, have a relationship after they get off the roof there. Diane's going to go live her life with, you know, her uh, new husband and stuff. And they're probably never going to speak again. Um, And, you know, that's fine. Like, you know, people grow apart, especially over, you know, that the sort of stuff that happens in the show with, you know, the, you know, with Bojack and Diane and, you know, and all that. Um, But it's also just important to, you know, remind people that, you know, it's not, uh, there, there's still there's still an air of optimism there like you know there, there's there's still a lot of, like you know pessimism there as well but you know there's a um you know it's it's uh equally balanced mm-hmm. yeah for sure um yeah I, I i did i mean i as much as like i'm still kind of conflict about how i do feel about this this ending i did think that you know, like you said, um, there's kind of that implication that, like, you know, uh, Bojack and Diane, who you, you, you know, pretty much started off, started this show off with those two, um, kind of saying at the end is like this is probably the last conversation we're going to have, so we're going to kind of hash things out now. Um, you know, I, I do, I did, I did enjoy that scene. I, I thought that was very well done. Yeah, as far as like a thing to end on, like I think that was very. Uh, I wasn't sure if that specific that last shot was supposed to be a reference to um, anything in the first season, just because I haven't watched it in a while. But I feel like maybe. Yeah, it was. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't really sure. It kind of just holds on that. Um, um, shot yeah, of him staring at the sky. Shot. Yeah, and it's kind of weird um, because I have uh, subtitles turned on my Netflix only because. I turned it on, I think, because I was trying to watch The Witcher, and it's, like, a little quiet in some spots, and I just haven't bothered to turn it back off. Um, sure. But because it holds on that shot of them just sitting there looking at the sky for so long, if I didn't have the um, the subtitles uh, displaying the lyrics of the song playing, it just would have been that static image. Right. <laughs> it would have been a little, a little more boring to watch that part. Um. But yeah, um, I know. I, I like I said earlier. I I'm glad Bojack kind of got to end where it wanted to. Um, I'm always I'm always on the side of letting a show end where it wants to end, getting you getting what at least what the creators feel is a satisfying ending, rather than either. Um, like Kyle said, run it like the Simpsons run forever. Um, and you know, have a, or maybe, I don't know what do you guys said. Uh, have a I did. disbalance. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's late and I'm tired. <laughs> um, have, have a disbalance of, of quality in your episodes or, you know, get canceled too, too soon. Um, and you know, you're kind of left with a bunch of questions. Um, now I'm sure there's plenty of questions, um, uh, you know, regarding adult men and uh, several other characters and plot points in this show that I'm sure could be explored if the show went on more. Um, but I, that strikes me as this is where the creators feel uh, Bojack could end appropriately. And, um, you know, I'm happy that they're able to given that opportunity to end it on their terms. 
Yeah, I really don't think that the whole writer strike situation had that much to do with like them ending where they where they ended at. I feel like they were in the process of winding down. I mean, just when you look at where they were at when that was all happening, like I I feel like they they did get to end it the way that they wanted to. Like um I would say that obviously that the whole the strike situation and stuff, you know, did more harm against uh, you know, like Tuka and Birdie, you know, than it did to Bojack. Which is, you know, related because that's a, uh, you know, Lisa Hannawalt's uh, show, and she worked on BoJack. Is like, you know, the, you know, she, all of her animal people. That's her. That's her whole design. Um, oh wow. Yeah. Um, and honestly, that I think that was the biggest. Um, I feel like with BoJack on its way out, I was very much looking forward to uh, Tuka and Birdie sort of taking it up that sort of slot and not even in the aspect that it's you know related to bojack in that way that it's you know the the same the character designer like then that's her show but just like in regards to the content matter like i i, I like how i like how bojack approaches this stuff and Tuka and birdie seemed like it was going to be the same but you know for um uh for you know, like, because, uh, you know, Bojack's about, like, you know, the Hollywood elite and, like, you know, agents and, like, you know, people in the publishing industry. And, you know, I mean, Todd mm-hmm. is like, you know, the, the hijinks of Todd, Todd is like the, the closest stuff that we kind of got to, like, you know, uh, seeing this, how this sort of stuff addresses, like, everyday people. Uh, but the Tuca and Birdie, but, like, you know, kind of dealt with that, like, a lot of that. And the other thing, too, is that it was just so much more uh, animated as well. Um <laughs> I really liked it, and I, I would have loved to have seen Tuke and Birdie go on for as many seasons as BoJack did to sort of... Um, but, you know, unfortunately had his leg you know, cut out under it from the whole uh, strike thing, so we'll, we'll never know, but... Yeah. Um, but in... Reg- in um, I only just found out that uh, the creator for BoJack, the, the Raphael Bob Waxberg, um, has another show that he just started like in September... Uh, called Undone. Wow. Um, he co-created it with uh, someone else who was uh, like one of the writers on BoJack. Um, and it's is a, this it's a Netflix a, show? No, it's on uh, Amazon. But it's like it's a it's a drama show, and it's uh, it's like a rotoscoped animation show. Um, hmm. I know uh, I can't remember her name, but it's the lead actress from Alita: Battle Angel is the lead in that, and okay. um, and. Um, uh, why am I blanking on his name right now? Saul Goodman from uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, uh, Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, I was like, I was trying to think, Mr. Show with who and David? Oh, Bob, that's right. That's, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So apparently they have a a, a new show that they're uh, doing on Amazon, and so I'm definitely going to check that out. You know, being a big fan of BoJack that I am, I, I definitely want to check that out too, just to see like. Because uh, you know BoJack was you know a, a drama, it, you know it was like half drama, half comedy essentially. So to see, I want to see like what they approach uh, with this it is full com- to full drama. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Huh. And also just because you know rotoscope an- animation is always uh, pretty neat to see. So yeah, I, I've literally never heard of that, but um, yeah, I'll, just found out about it. Oh, huh. have to give that a shot. And I do feel kind of bad because I have never seen Tuca and Birdie, even though people have raved to me about it. If you uh, like it, for people out there, if you like Bojack, I would say give Tuka and Birdie a chance. It is a bit different in being um, sort of primarily focused on um, on the like you know where Bojack was mainly sort of like about males in Hollywood and that sort. Of, well, you know, but obviously kind of dealing with like the whole you know blowback on all that sort of stuff. Uh, Tuka and Birdie was kind of like the female equivalent to that. Um, and I've, I know that that would you know probably turn off like some people, but I would say if you enjoy BoJack, give it a chance. It's it's definitely worth. It's just one season, unfortunately, but uh, I would say that it's uh, very much worth the watch. All right then. Um, well, Kyle, do you have any any closing thoughts you'd like to share with the class? I sure don't. You Not, sure none don't. at all. Don't don't have any any words of of wisdom, some inspiring thoughts for the masses. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kyle, everybody. <laughs> he a cool guy. Um, he is a cool guy. Yeah. Well, uh, everybody, there you go. Um, uh, you know, it's sad to see Bojack go, but, you know, 
Um, but you love to uh, watch him leave. Sh- sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, um, let us know in the comments, uh, you know, if, if you're a fan of Bojack and, uh, what you kind of thought of this final season or, you know, just kind of the, the show in general. If, uh, Wait, sorry. Hang on. I just remembered one thing we didn't address. Okay. They, Mr. Peanut Butter and Bojack finally got the crossover episode. They sure did. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, watch season six. You finally get to see their crossover episode. It's only like a bit of <laughs> like a one minute gag, but it's definitely worth it. I, I just like that he asks he, like he asks him as he's as he's asked him millions of times in the show of crossover episode and Bojack finally relents and just like, yep, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> it was kind of a sweet moment. <laughs> yeah, definitely definitely one of the highlights. Yeah. Uh, well thank you everybody for listening. Thank you two gentlemen for, for being here tonight. And uh, we will be back again next week with uh, Sonic. It's Sonic the Horthog. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the most anticipated uh, movie of Valentine's Day. <laughs> Which so I will somehow, at some point this coming weekend, have to twist my wife's heart to go see. So. I know me and Kyle already got our tickets. Yep. I haven't gotten to that point yet, but I guess <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for listening and we will catch you all again next week. See you then. Thanks for listening to the Ink and Pink Club podcast. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the show. Join our Discord to chat with us and subscribe to our Patreon for some cool bonuses. Links are in the description. We'll see you next time.